The islands of Indonesia are home to more than 210 million people. Most are cut off from the gospel. These unreached people groups can be grouped into 23 people clusters. The Madura cluster is made up of 20 million people who speak dialects of the Madura language, the Bawian, the Pandalungan, and the Madurese. The Madurese are the country's third largest people group numbering 13 million. About 4 million still live on the island of Madura, while the rest reside primarily on Java. Due to overpopulation on Java, the Indonesian government has forced many Madurese to settle among other islands. Many of these people have recently had to flee back to Madura as refugees due to ethnic cleansing. Thousands now reside on Madura Island trying to rebuild their lives and find a place to call home. The Madurese have long suffered rejection. Their outspoken way of communicating is viewed as socially unacceptable by neighbouring peoples of Indonesia. They have a reputation for being tough and expressive with a fiery disposition. Centuries ago, the Madurese became known for hot-tempered revenge through a practice called charuk. Using a sickle-shaped blade, Madurese men fight to the death to defend their honor and avoid humiliation to themselves or their family. The risk-taking nature of the Madurese also finds expression in the dangerous sport of bull racing. The fierce competition and high stakes of these races lead bull minders to train their animals as if they were prize athletes. Bull breeding is a large part of Madura's economy and bull racing is synonymous with the Madura people. Winning bulls bring their owners great prestige. But their strong temperament can be seen positively in their work ethic. Survival requires that they work very hard. Moderees are known as entrepreneurs. Many are fishermen, owning their own boats. Others are involved in salt mining and harvesting rice, corn and other crops. Ferries frequent the Madura Straits, shuttling those who earn a living on Java Many find occupations as street vendors or baychuck drivers, like Machalang. He is one of the many Madurese who have left the island of Madura to find work in East Java. I like to live here because it is more peaceful for me. I feel more safe. Yet, many like Machalang still live in fear of evil spirits and wonder if their good works alone will lead them to paradise. Unwavering, they remain fiercely loyal to their Islamic tradition. The majority are Muslim, 100% Muslim. Islam arrived in the 14th century, spread throughout the islands, and now Indonesia has the world's largest Muslim population. Virtually 100% of the Madurese are Muslim. Muslims believe that there is only one God, Allah, and that Muhammad was his last prophet. Devout Madurese pray five times a day, and on Fridays, it's common to see many spilling out of the mosques performing noontime prayers. The Madurese incorporate a mixture of animistic and occult practices with their Muslim faith. Some of these unorthodox practices include praying to dead prophets at their grave sites and prayer vigils for dead family members. 
They believe these rituals help the dead get to paradise. Islam is a community-based religion and touches all aspects of the spiritual, social and political needs of the community. Among the Madaris, there is a great dependence upon religious leaders called Kiais, who hold great influence over their communities. The Kiai, without being asked, has to go to the community and give his contribution. Many Madaris children attend Islamic schools, which are under the leadership of the local Kiai. Learning Arabic is a strong focus and considered essential to being a good Muslim. The main duty of our schooling system is to present the mission of Allah, to bring wisdom and blessing to the universe for both Muslim or non-Muslim, to care, to preserve, to educate, to gain the goal that is happiness until the grave and in the heavenly realm. Christians have long labored to bring the Madaris the message of God's love and forgiveness. A history of tragic circumstances has marked the evangelization of this people group. Despite the sacrificial commitment of early missionaries, seemingly little lasting impact has resulted. Over a period of more than a hundred years, portions of the scriptures were translated into Madaris but each time the work was in some way destroyed or prevented from being published. It wasn't until 1994 that the Bible was even finally available in the Madaris language. The spread of the Gospel has been hindered and the majority of the Madaris remain unreached with the Gospel. Many Madaris perceive Christians in a negative light and view the cross as an oppressive symbol. In spite of these setbacks and difficulties, God is moving amongst the Madaris. Lately, there has been a renewed interest and challenge to reach these people. There are now an estimated 500 believers. Most live as secret believers and are scattered amongst the islands, making discipleship difficult. Like many Muslims worldwide, there have been reports from amongst the Madaris of Jesus revealing himself through dreams and visions. I was having a lot of problems, testing and trials in my life. Then I met a friend and we talked and I got a lot of teaching from him. He gave me a movie about Jesus and one night I had a dream. Two people came to me and one of them said, don't be afraid, I'm going to help you with everything. I am Jesus, your saviour. The effective way to win the Madaris people is to be a friend to them, love them, not judge them, help them, respect them as God respects them, be involved in their social activity, feel their feelings. Don't just give them the teaching and doctrines, be actively involved in their lives. They want to see a living and true testimony. Join with others to bring the Madaris home to the Father's love. Help with English teaching projects. We were one of the first teams to do English teaching on the island of Madura. While we were there, we had the opportunity to be involved in religious discussion. And for me personally, as an islander, I had the opportunity to relate to the people. Like It was just so easy. But the most important thing was that I was able to share who God is in my life. Community development. The Madura people are our neighbours. I felt so satisfied after building a water tank for the refugees there. I really believe that it is God's will for us to do that because it represents Father's love to the people. Business Consulting We're very excited to have adopted the Madura people and I think if we can 
embrace these people and get alongside them, get businessmen in there, consult with them, work with them, I think we can really see the Kingdom of God come amongst the Madura people. Prayer and Worship We, we were a worship team, a prayer team, and so that's what we did. We, we ate with the people, we talked to people, we visited key sites and uh, places where they worshipped, but our goal was really to catch the heart of God for the people. And join in fervent prayer that more Madurese would have dreams and visions of Jesus and that the new believers would grow strong in their faith for the mobilization of Indonesian churches to reach their Madurese neighbors, for continual encouragement for the workers, and that more believers would respond to the need and commit to go to the Madurese. I'm doing this for them because of the gospel, because Jesus loves them so much and I love them as well. We can win them for Jesus because they have incredible potential. If only we could have missionaries that are willing to come to Madura to talk about Jesus. God is longing that these people would come into relationship with Him. He wants to pour out His heart of love upon them. And I'm convinced that through more prayer and worship, we will see breakthrough. We are His feet. We are the answer to the prayers we pray. To see these people reach, the time is now to bring them home. The path that leads them to the Father starts with you and me.